Today we are going to show you a practical and budget friendly touring setup for the 60 series including a price breakdown. These are $205 each. And wait till you up. Power will flow and start charging auxiliary batteries. This battery's gonna crank. Oh. 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 <laughs> We're getting this iconic full drive ready for its first oh. trip. Noise stuff. This is the draw in action. But not without finding a few hidden problems along the way. We found our first bit of rust. But let's get stuck into it right now. Oh, a bit of space in there. Some baby making room in here, I'll tell ya. What's the plan? Probably don't need another one though. <laughs> <laughs> the goal is to one, get it serviced. So we'll do a bit of a service on it. They're a bit more reliable. A bit more reliable, we'll just check out a few things. And then we're gonna get a bit of a camp set up, but I'm on a bit of a budget. <laughs> the K truck's actually taking all of my money at the moment. Well, that's it. <laughs> that doesn't mean we're gonna go and buy the, uh, the cheapest, thing you can find on the internet. I'm guessing the uh, camp set up in here is gonna be in here for a fair while, even after, in the future, if you go nuts with this. Even in the future, yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll future-proof it a bit. I don't wanna just put cheap, nasty stuff in, but I don't wanna break the budget either, cause break the bank, sorry. I'm thinking like a cool drawer setup. I might even buy the fridge drawer off myself. Am oh, I, am I Facebook allowed to do marketplace. that? Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> we, we might get some, some bigger 32s on it. Yeah. See if we can get a marketplace steel there as well. Then I'm just gonna build a bed in the back, basically, so just out you, of timber. You feeling that you've got room here for your stature? Yeah, I've got, there's 1800 and I'm 1800. So. Oh, well, simple math, yeah. yeah. and well, you could always go diagonal if, if the missus isn't here, so. Yeah, well, we'll find out. And so then if it does create another kid, I can throw a rooftop on the top and <laughs> away we go and put the babies in the back. Well, dad buses do have the uh, tendency to create children. They're dangerous things, the dad buses, I'll tell you. So I'm going to give a bit of a price rundown of some of the options I've been researching. I don't know every brand in the bloody industry, but just the stuff I've been Googling and finding myself. And we'll compare a few few things. Let's see what this is all about. Yeah, I said it through TJ the keys. I said, mate, you gotta feel what a real car is like to drive. Land Cruiser. Oh, hey, double clutch it, very shifting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of mind blowing, to be honest. Too bad, like the clutch is pretty heavy though. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is. What's that? Uh, so far he's found the air conditioner. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he's still got it. He can still remember to drive how to drive a manual. Oh, leaf springs? Yeah, leaf springs love to party. Oh, it's actually pretty smooth. It is surprisingly smooth. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. serious power. <laughs> Man, these uh, mongrel keys are pretty good. Oh, yeah, they're pretty good. Very loud. Yeah, bloody mongrels, aren't they? Sounds like a bloody mongrel dog yelling at me. Oh, nice. These uh, brakes are a bit how you're going. It took me by surprise there. Uh, you got to press the uh, pedal a little bit harder, you know, if you want power brakes, it's quite simple. You yeah. just use two feet. Where's the anchor? When do you throw that uh, one? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the car you hit will be the anchor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got air con, it just doesn't work. But um, I'm going to get that regassed and see if it works, because that'll be wicked. Oh, yeah. How jealous are you getting? In the shed, we're having a little bit of a break from the K truck because, well, we all know that's not going to happen overnight. Stuck into the 60 series. Um, thinking there's a lot of boring jobs I've got to do, like service it, but we'll leave that for later because I want to show you guys how to do just a simple little, just a basic service at home. It's something you guys can do in between services. You don't need too many tools, but it's a great thing to do for your car. I want to do it specifically because when I buy a new car, a new old car, you don't really know much history about it or you don't trust the person you bought it off. So if you just do your basic service, you know it's gonna be pretty sweet for a little while. I wanna get into the exciting jobs. So that is Camp Fit Out. Oh, I've gone and bought myself some form ply. 45 bucks a sheet for 18 by 12 form ply. I think it's like 20 or 25 mil thick, I'll check. I went the form ply because it's already got the black top. Then I've gone and bought myself a drawer. I'm getting stuck into the camp setup first because look, it's the most exciting part of it all, isn't it? <laughs> you want to just kit it out and make it your own. I'm going to make it a Facebook marketplace purchase off myself. So I've got <laughs> I've got a drawer fridge in the back of the cruiser. I bought on the Tassie trip. I think it was like four or five hundred bucks. It was Oz Trails. I've put that thing through absolute friggin' hell. I've jumped the cruiser in it, put dust all through the back because I've got a couple of holes in the back I need to seal up. 
absolutely punish that thing off-road. I've never once strapped this fridge down. It jumps so high that I actually punched a hole in the roof of the fridge. It's still working fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to buy it off myself for, let's say, 250 bucks. That's about what you can get a Facebook Marketplace draw fridge for. Otherwise, you can buy them brand new for about 400 bucks, like all sorts of different brands. But for the sake of putting a dollar value on it, we're gonna say it's 250 bucks for that drawer fridge. My drawer fridge one side and a drawer on the other. You can go from mild to wild. There is $2,000 drawer setups, it's $3,000 drawer setups, or there's $250 drawer setups. The ones I research is obviously coming in the lowest. You got Titan King drawers, they're $250 for a dual drawer setup. But moving on from that, we've got Maxi Track was $450. I believe that was a dual drawer as well. I've had the XTM was, but that's for a single drawer. You've got to buy two, so that brought it back up to 500 bucks. Then you've got the Ridge Rider. So I ended up choosing the Ridge Rider. The reason I like it, is because I really just wanted one that had the drawer and then a table slide out as well. Uh, it was starting to get to the point where I was like, I might have to make this because no one sells it. Then I found this one and it's pretty perfect. So it was $450 for the one drawer, but it's also a table. So it's saving me money there. We'll see, let's get it out of the box, see what it looks like. And we'll start mapping out what we're gonna do in the back of this. Thing. I almost forgot something. Luckily, I've had the car builder's kit for the K truck for like, um, clearly haven't got around to that. So I'm gonna borrow it for the 60. Anyway, it's, it's up here. Yeah, it's super safe to get up here. So we've got <sighs> noise liner, sound deadener. I've actually bought cheap stuff off eBay before. I think it was called like Ping Jing. And look, it sort of did the job, but it also melted in all my doors and black stuff started running out of the doors. I went to car builders and never looked back. Plus they're Australian. Two boxes of this is going to do the whole back and sides, probably have a heap left over. That's the sound deadener, which is this, this stuff, peel and stick. Takes the tinniness out of all the panels. And the other is the mass noise liner. So two boxes of that was $200. One box of this, which will do the whole back, which is like a heavy, dense vinyl rubber with, with foam as well. It's noise liner, so it's gonna stop a lot of the noise. And that is $120. So $320, we'll do all the back of this 60 series cruiser. High five. <laughs> Cuddles. Good girl. I'll never have to look back at it again once all this is built. So that's the main reason I'm doing it now. I can't believe I nearly forgot. I was about to pull the carpet out and I went, oh, noise stuff. We found our first bit of rust. Okay, that's it there. So when I took the rubber off just to pull this panel off, that's when we found it. Little tiny bit there. The other side's pretty good. But all in all, for a vehicle of this age, to have no rust down in those quarters, no rust in the roof, um, I can deal with this. So what I'm gonna do with this is pretty much these little packs of wire wheels for nothing. They're like 15 bucks at Bunnings. But I'm just gonna give that a bit of a wire wheel and then I'm gonna hit it with this rust converter. So this is 18 bucks from Bunnings, little bits already and you can see it turns the rust black and it also seals it completely. So yeah, it goes off pretty quick too. That is the sound deadener down. I used about one and a half boxes. Mass noise liner time. I think it's about a meter by 1600. This is 1500. Oh, I reckon that's gonna go pretty bloody good like that. Yeah, you reckon? Just lay that in there and trim the edges. Time to board out this bad boy, I reckon. seats folded down. Now I'm going to make this to suit seats up. Build infill pieces in the front for the bed. Bloody hot today, but we've got our baseboard in down here. You can either screw or bolt that to the floor or if you made it a tight fit, you don't need to do either. You can just let it sit there. Now we have a base we can screw to. So I'm going to go ahead, get this drawer out get it positioned, mark some centers. And then we can start building some side panels. Sure, there's a zillion ways to do it, to be honest. I've put a post on the Facebook 60 series and there's a lot of cool stuff on there. There's one fellow I actually took a little bit of an inspiration from with the black and timber theme. 
it's kind of good that it's all it comes all put together for you. Well, I should weigh it actually. Coming in at 32.5 kilos on the Land Cruiser weight scales. Whoa, we'll go ahead and put it in. Who needs gym? Just build some cars. Carpet top there. Now this feature is the main reason I got it. So let's make sure it works. Ah, oh. ah, oh, there we go. This is the main reason I went with this one. Boom, you got yourself a table. So you're gonna be standing here cooking, doing whatever on here. You can have your little cooker and you can then have this fridge on the left. So you can still open that or you can use your tailgate as a bit of a, another little work platform. That is why I went with that one. That's great. It's actually a fridge slide as well, but I don't think I'll really ever use that for anything. I'm wearing the cut your way in, weld your way out shirt today. Can't really weld your way out of timber. So measure twice, cut once is the saying for that one. I just want to talk about not so much safety because I'm not always the safest. I wear pluggers in the shed. Just uh, rushing and accidents can happen. So five or six years ago, I was using a circ saw and I cut, I won't post up what uh, the gory ones. The circular saw through my hands, lucky to have my fingers. You know, I had five hours of microsurgery, piecing everything back together. Very, very lucky. And all it was, I got complacent. I was rushing. It was Christmas. Oh, well, coming up to Christmas, I had to get some stuff done. I literally had my Christmas party. Just be careful, guys. Don't rush. Think about what you're doing. And because uh, that's when accidents happen. So I don't want to see anyone getting hurt in the shed. Also, I, uh, I can't feel this finger anymore. <laughs> and most of that finger. <laughs> oh, and I can't feel the end of my thumb. Really makes trying to put bolts on really difficult. Okay, a little bit of a walkthrough of what we've done so far. So the fridge is gonna go in here, made it the same size as that box. This might end up a bit of a air or power outlet or something. Might give the timber a little bit of a stain. This is the drawer in action. And then I've worked this out too. If you want some more, bench space, just slide that out. <laughs> we finished off all the boarding in here. Oh, I ran out of timber, so it's not, <laughs> not as wide. Here you'll see the step in, which I'm really sad about. Three sheets of form ply, and we've got that much left. That's pretty good going, I reckon. And the mattress will come out to here anyway. Heaps of storage through there. Oh yeah, new shirts. But they're on a heavy tee. Uh, I might do a run of normal ones yet, but currently, if you're buying one, they're a heavy tee, so they're thicker. They hang over the shoulders, so they're a wider sort of oversized fit. I guess that's about it for the timber work. I'm gonna get stuck into the next section, which is buy more parts actually. I better go jump on the computer. So we're on to the boring stuff. A little bit of a service going on. We've got this pesky 300 kilo diff in the way. Got a K truck up on the hoist. Metal work gear everywhere. I need a bigger shed, I know. This is something you can do on your driveway. Just keep in mind, if you've just driven it for ages, it's gonna be hot, messy too. There's gonna be water going everywhere. There's gonna be oil going everywhere. Just a couple of things to keep in mind. First things first, oil and filter. It's one of the best things you can do to your car in between services if you'd like. Pretty simple process, especially on these old cars. I've just been down to my local Autobahn Kiwana. The boys and girls down there are absolute bloody legends. I've just always gone there, you know, for like the last, what, 10 years or something I've been living here. They're just all car enthusiasts. So I just love going there. I use Nulon just cause, I don't know, I've just always used it. Nulon water. I'll put all the prices of what everything costs just here. This is to free up the windows. It's it's like a silicon lubricant. Coolant, Ryko air filter. Ryko stuff's good. I've always used the Ryko gear as well. Got some wiring, because I've also bought a stereo. Got a couple new struts for the back window. 
So the oil was about 64 bucks all up. Coolant was 50 bucks, the water was five bucks. It, it's, it's a concentrate, so you mix it up. Carry extra with me. For TJ, of course, for the LN. <laughs> Air filter was 50 bucks. The oil filter was 20 bucks. And the struts for the back window were 100 bucks. Price breakdown of everything we're doing on this car. And I'm gonna do that the whole way through, even when I decide that I don't wanna keep it budget friendly anymore. I'm gonna do this with my King Chrome tool kit. This is the 150 piece one. This can literally be your entire home kit and away kit. It's got literally everything you need in it. There we go, that's the ticket. A little bit of old grease and stuff around. Oh, uh oh, we're about to overfill. Oh no, oh, we're in trouble. Oh, I can't get it back in the hole. I've done a mischief. <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? There's oil everywhere. I've come back for the worst part of the build. So what are we doing, oil change? Oil change. Oh, you've got your protective headwear on. Yeah, I found it in the rag bag. <laughs> <laughs> oil filter, air filter, and coolant. There's nothing more reliable than information coming from a man with that hat. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying you just like to do it on your new old car purchases because uh, you don't know what other people have been doing. I've just gone through this experience for the past year. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? Your LM106 has been unreliable or something? It has some weird stuff <laughs> going on inside. Yeah, you're right. Like this battery terminal. <laughs> Quick disconnect. That's an anti-theft device as well. We'll sort this out when we do the dual battery kit, which is coming up. Got the oil draining out of the sump. Now we'll... Pull this lid off, super easily pull this lid off. Pull that lid off? Yeah, just really easily pull. <laughs> oh, maybe it's this. You gotta undo the screw. Ah, right? that'll be what it is. Oh, the whole thing fell off. A340, that's what I ordered. How good? Same as my gearbox. <laughs> it's actually the same as your gearbox. <laughs> Very flash looking. Spanking you. Yeah, anyone would think it's brand new or something. It's easy as that. <laughs> A little bit of a sneak peek, look at this chasm. Anybody would think there's going to be a few brackets and thingamajigs for cool over. You want to see a sneak peek or something cool? Have a look at these. That what is, is it? What is that? A link? That, that's, a, that's one of the four main link arms in the front. Well, five, including the panard, that are weld into the ends. Those seven mil wall seamless tube but you ain't bending that in a hurry, I tell you. Next build episode on the K-Truck is coilovers in the front. Have you got that air filter in yet? <laughs> no, I don't. Manages to compound turbo a Cummins in his backyard, but can't change an air filter in the 60. Why'd they make it so hard back then? <laughs> <laughs> Top mount bloody oil filter. Yeah, it's really strange, it points upwards. I'm trying to just use my King Chrome toolkit and not use any specialty items, but. This is the new, oh, we got a Ryko filter going in. Yeah, cause it's black. Actually, yeah, cause they're normally white, hey? Yeah, normally white. What's going on there? <laughs> Nothing. I wouldn't trust anyone wearing that hat. <laughs> it's only in the packet. <laughs> Question is, is there room for leverage in that bay? Well, that's why it's got the uh, swivel handle. Oh, straight on. A great tool though. It's so great if I so go the wrong way. <laughs> so great it even tightens. <laughs> New one. Little tip for young players. Run the oil around the edge. Ah, he's ah. good. Yeah, even TJ knew that one. Not my first oil change. No. Normally when they're like this, you take them off, they're full of oil. Whereas the upside down one. The old upside down one doesn't uh, doesn't stay full of water. Ah, uh, oil. <laughs> I hope it doesn't have water. Oh, I also hope it doesn't have water. <laughs> this is how the King Chrome oil filter wrench works. So as you turn it, it tightens up. Yeah, and grabs it. And grabs it and turns it. And then you release and you can spin back around and then turn it again. So, I oh know this might be real simple stuff and probably 90% of you guys are going, yes, we know how to service a car. For the young fellas, the 17 year olds that wanna learn their car, learn a few different things, this is how simple it is well, to do. Remember my first oil change was very messy. <laughs> you know, it's always messy it's when you don't have a hoist. So, just be careful, some cars uh, can be strange, like a Ford Ranger. You, you gotta, oh, yeah. yeah, you can't let them run dry for too long, otherwise they seize the motor, they do all sorts of weird yeah, stuff. 
some aren't. So just be careful, just Google and research. I don't know if uh, diesel oil is any different to unleaded oil. I don't, I can't really feel that one, but what I mostly do is Google what oil my engine needs basically. And it'll usually tell you. So this is 20 weight 50, Nulon X Protect suits BMWs. <laughs> and of course, Toyota, the one car for me. <laughs> <laughs> This has a second grab handle for when you're chugging. Now I don't really have a preference on oil really. This is what the Autobahn boys recommended. So that's what we're going with. Hey mate, uh, you got any uh, wheels for sale around here? Look yeah, I actually do have a bit of stock in it. I'll throw them out so you can check them out, mate. Oh, bloody like new, these things. I reckon hundred bucks each, mate. What do you reckon? Uh, yeah, now they're out, I'll, um, I'll go think about it. I better go ask the boss, actually. Oh. Is that still available? Yeah, mate, still for sale. Nah, you're dreaming. Hey, is that Big Bickies? Oh, are these the wheels still for sale? Yep, still for sale. Um, tell your boyfriend, 300. Uh, I only have 150. You can do, I can do 200, I reckon, 200. I ain't paying that, mate. There's a piece of me that thinks that that was the boyfriend. And wheels still for sale? Look, yeah, you can have them for 300 bucks. 300 bucks? I reckon my cousin can get them cheaper than that. How's 400? Well, oh, four, 400, yeah, 400 bucks. Just take them. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, just, nah. 200 bucks just don't hurt me. Nah, you think I don't got money or something? Got a deal at 600. What do you reckon? 600 bucks? Yeah, oh, hold on. Should go get me car, get the money. Yeah, you go get the money. I might, might go lock the fence. Oh, yeah, that's the rims I'm after. You bloody ripper. How much, mate? Yeah, 400 bucks. Yeah, 50 bucks. Nah. 50 bucks. Can't do that. 50 bucks? Nah. Give me 50 bucks. Okay, yep. Oh, TJ, how's the, uh, Sell them wheels going, mate. Oh, mate. Facebook Marketplace, savage. Actually, they'll fit the 60. Yeah, throw them on that. Yeah, what do you want for them? 200 bucks. Yours. Beauty. Sweet. Done. I don't think I have a charger for leaving them out the back of my house for the last six months, so call it square or what? Whoa, g'day, guys. It's Zalia. Where is this drain plug? Of course, directly above a heap of steel. Not going to go well at all. Yeah, Dad's about to get covered in water. Whoa. And there it starts. I was gonna let it do that <laughs> for a while. All right, this is a spill-free radiator kit. Pulling the stop out. Eventually get to a point where they're still cooling in here. Turn the engine on, run the engine until the thermostat opens. Basically, you'll see air bubbles coming out of this and it just, it bleeds the the, cool, the entire cooling system stops air getting into the system, which causes heating issues. Oh. That's the thermostat open now, and some air starting to come out. Fills up your overflow and you're done. All right, we're talking shocks. The biggest supporter of our channel is Superior Engineering. This is their bottom range shock, and I use these in the Jeep for budget builds. And honestly, they perform so bloody well, it's not even funny. So we've gone these again. There are some other options. So there was, I looked at, we got our friend Mitch from Superior Engineering. Good old Mitchy boy. These are $205 each. Some of the other options we had to choose from was an EFS shock, which is $173, which yes, cheaper, extra 35 bucks. I've, I don't know, I've had experience with these, so that's why I'm going back to them. Also, Tough Dogs were $213, so they're a little bit more expensive. I know a lot of guys use them in 79s and things like that. This is for... These aren't for a 60 series, so don't go on Googling Superior for 60 series shocks. So the boys in there are avid, avid wheelers and love developing products and figuring out all the random different things. So the front, I've got it written down here, the front is actually an 80 series rear shock which is eye to pin it's a two inch lift shock which has 9.5 inches of travel as for the rear good old trusty 79 series so they are 79 series rear shocks 
two inch again and have a 10 inch total travel. That's what we're rolling with. Thanks, DJ. <laughs> and wider, 12 and a half. Nice. No, these aren't 35s. I know. Oh, they're 35s. They're not. Th Let's get these shocks and get these wheels on. Put a poll up on, on Insta of Bull Bar versus putting the factory bumper on because I found one and I bought it. <sighs> it's very 50 50. It's like 52% keep the Bull Bar, 48. I think it was like 1,800 votes or something. But oh, it's so hard. Uh, I'm a bumper guy, but I really like the nostalgic look of it at the moment. Got a period correct bull bar and winch and lights on it and stuff. So might change it later. I'll keep it how it is for now, I think, and change it later. Maybe leave a comment below. Have I done the right thing by leaving the bull bar on or should I go to the bumper? <laughs> Replacing shocks in these old boys or girls, whatever it is, is um, pretty basic, pretty easy. You're gonna need yourself a jack. It doesn't have to be a trolley jack, a jack stand. Car stand, jack stand, whatever you wanna call it. Get yourself a decent set of these so that you can remain a dad for your young ones. Hey, we don't want a car falling on me, do we? Like I said, I'm using the, the King Chrome kit. So portable and easy, you don't have to keep going back into the shed to grab tools. You can see we're off the jack. Uh, I highly suggest cracking the wheel nuts first. <laughs> Got to mention is this car already has two inch leafs, uh, two inch lift leaf springs in it. So that's a bonus, don't have to do that. We've gained a little bit more travel. It's a lot nicer looking shot. And while we're here, we'll have a look at the brake pads. I'll probably look at getting some new pads and pads and rotors in the future. Brake lines look alright. Leaf springs and bushes look alright. They fit pretty new actually. Don't worry about this coolant. That's I didn't tighten the plug enough. Anyway, I fixed that. Personally, I don't run the, the boots, whatever you want to call them, these things. Entirely up to you guys, but I do a lot of beach work. Personal preference if you want to run them or not. You do risk in the rear rocks and stuff hitting the shaft, damaging the shaft and damaging the seals and oil leaking. Now that we've watched Ozzy Arvo's Dan the Man teach us all about wheel bearings. Obviously you said you check for play. There actually is a little bit of play there. <laughs> I might give it a nip up. Roll it, should sort of roll to a stop. If it stops abruptly, then you're too tight. If it spins forever, you're too loose. But anyway, that's um, it's a bit of play there. So <laughs> I won't bore you guys with that, but I'm gonna pull this hub off, tighten the um, wheel bearings up a little bit. Fun fact, safety fact from Macca, don't jack up the entire rear of your car because your handbrake won't work. Your front wheels will just roll away. So just be very, very mindful of that. I've just done one corner at a time. It's a bit safer. Handbrake actually works in this bad boy really well. Be very careful guys, uh, I don't want to lose anyone and I, 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 I'm I, a firm believer in everyone should have a crack at their cars themselves and get to know their cars, so be careful. <laughs> Last but not least, oh, always make sure you do up your wheel nuts with preferably a torque wrench set to the correct torque rating, which I think is 100 foot pound. If you don't have one of them, just use the breaker bar until it's FT. I'll let you work out what that means. There's one last thing Superior have told me to mention. If you're putting 79 series rears in, some of the early models like mine have a 16 mil bush. That's this hole that it slots onto. Some of the, but the later ones have a 19 mil, which is the same as the 79. If you're like me and you have an early one, there's a crush tube that Superior can supply that takes it from a 16 to a 19 mil. Just remember, this is a hack. This isn't designed for a 60 series. Some of the older 60 series have a 19 mil, exactly the same as a, as a 79 series. Moving on to the dreaded 12 volt. Simo's just doing some Simo stuff. We're working on the 60 and the K truck today. It's Saturday, it's a lovely day to work on the projects. I'm not wasting my weekend, it's getting this done so that we can get it off road, go camping. That brings me to my 12 volt systems. We need to get the fridge going. The cheapest, cheapest way to do this, keep in mind if you're using a lithium battery, you're probably gonna have to buy a more expensive battery charger. But if you're running a second battery, you can get away with what's called a VSR, voltage sensing <laughs> relay isolator and wiring kit. An Anadrive one, which is 100% my pick, I believe. It was a really good kit. 140 amp switch and 100 amp capable 
alternator, 120 amp capable alternator, which a lot of new cars are. Came in at $155, minus your 5% discount from Outback Equipments, $147. You got the Kings one, which is cheap as it was 80 bucks. Red Arc was $225. That is just for the relay, not wiring. So that's starting to get up there a bit, but I've got Red Arc in my cruiser. It is unbelievable stuff. You, you know you're never gonna have a drama with it, but you pay for it. The other one I checked out because the inner drive was actually out of stock. The boys said, give this one a well at Outback when I was ordering it. It's the projector version. Uh, very similar kit to the Energive, but it's 100 amp and good for 75 amp alternators, which mine's fine, but a lot of newer cars are gonna be more around that 100 amp alternator range. Uh, the kit was $189, less your 5%, so it was like $180. Some lighting I got from Tough Terrain, which is Outback Equipment's brand. Two 30 centimeter lights, strips, which dual color so they're orange as well to keep the bugs away and dimmable they have a dimmer already built into it the 60 is 85 dollars the 30 centimeter is 60 dollars less your five percent discount off that also got so this is a pre-loomed anderson plug this is just going to make life so easy <laughs> that we're going to run to the back of the car i'm really not a battery snob or, or a 12 volt snob I do like to stick to the bigger brands like Enerdrive and Red Arc. It's really good stuff. I just know it's, it, it works. A lot of guys in the industry highly recommend both. Chargers. So you want a 40 amp charger. I wouldn't bother with a 20. You got the Enerdrive is $470. DC to DC charger. And that can charge your lithium batteries. Kings one is $400. Red Arc is $500 for an in-car version. If you want an under bonnet version, they're $790. The hardcore one come in at $470. That's your choices of chargers and lithium batteries. There is a whole nother world of batteries. Here is a little drawing I have. We have the alternator, crank battery, auxiliary battery. So you run one, one cable to one side of the relay and one cable to your auxiliary. When this is sitting at 12 volt, not charging when the car is off, this switch inside here is open. We know power going to this battery. Now, when the car's running, this voltage here starts cranking up, which will bring this leg up to 13.5 odd volts as well. This relay is gonna go, hey, we got more power. Let's uh, shut that. Power will flow and start charging auxiliary batteries. So your alternator is charging both batteries at the exact same rate. I don't see this being an issue at all, provided this is an AGM. If this is a lithium, sweet right in there, mate, that says lithium. <laughs> um, these can draw a lot of current and it's not really regulated and can one, burn this out and two, burn your alternator out. If you're gonna go lithium, you can't run that. You need to put in a DC to DC charger instead. But these are good because these generally also take solar. Who remembers like, everyone's gonna be like, oh, the Sony x head unit was like the first one to come out with flashy lights and 130 bucks, can't go wrong. We actually bought these for TJ's Hilux. They didn't end up fitting, so they were $220 for a set of six by nines. 12 volt, here we go. Sorry, that was a long intro about what the hell I'm doing here. <laughs> I went to buy a AGM battery for under the bonnet. Uh, I am very much not a battery expert, but now I am. Under, under bonnet batteries are not AGM, they are lead acid and they can handle all the heat. Oh, is that how they do it? <laughs> don't put AGM under the bonnet. They don't like heat, they swell and could explode. Five amp hour lead acid battery. They are heavy, they're definitely no lithium. It's gonna work under the bonnet, so I'm saving heaps of space and I can always add a lithium to the back later. This battery's gonna crank. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> On the calculations of the tape measure, it should fit, but. Put that battery in. <laughs> yeah, mate, yeah. Today or like sometime during the <laughs> Trying to support one of my favorite creators, AKA Lachlan Pool. Ah. I have a, oh, how good is that? I have a Mira Emu Customs battery clamp. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> I've just figured out something. It's got an override button on the relay. If that connects the two batteries, surely I can jump start 
the main battery off the auxiliary battery and I read up about it and that's exactly what that switch is for. So that's really cool. It's sunny time. So, pull that bad boy out. Let's see what's been cut and chopped back here. If you haven't got an aftermarket head unit in and it's still factory, you can buy these adapters, which I bought, which I am not gonna use now. <laughs> so these adapters just plug and play to whichever stereo you buy and to whichever fact car you have. This is back to basics again, stripping cables. You can get wire strippers, which makes life easier. Lightly compress on the insulation here. Put your thumb against here, hold onto the cable on this side and just push away. It just takes a lot of practice. Obviously I did it for 16 years, so. Done a combination here, so you can just use crimps, so you can get yourself a crimper, you got red and blue there for each different size cable. Yeah, let's do a little bit of soldering. This is a King Chrome gas soldering iron. Oh, great. So we'll let that heat up. So as you can see, solder's not melting yet. There it goes. All right, so that means the tip is hot enough. You're basically just melting this solder through. So we'll hold this tip on for a little bit. Tip's obviously the hot part. That'll heat the copper up. Once the copper's hot, you see it melt just straight through onto that copper. We're feeding it into the copper, not into the tip. Because if you feed it into just the tip, then chances are your solder's just sitting on the cable. As you can see, if, if I cut that now, that'll be solder all the way through that connection. And that's what you want. You're joking, aircon. Not even kidding. Oh, just what me, man. <laughs> I just can't believe I have an old 60s that It's got freaking ice cold air con. Just testing out the, out the new shocks. It's actually quite comfortable, guys. I'm impressed. I mean, we've only hit speed bumps, but <laughs> it's pretty unreal. Oh, speed bump. There we go. There we go. Leaf Springs love to party. Let's see how much. Did we hit a speed bump? Yes. What's the point of that bar when your shocks are that good? <laughs> So my mate just unwrapping my new camp bed. Yeah, uh, this is actually the same one I had in my Ranger, um, but it was a fold-up one. Yeah, that's that's what I was worried about. So I was pretty wanted to keep the height down a bit. Good shit! This is the new one. This is the oversize I was talking about. Not painted on, eh? Yeah. Nah. So this still is. Still Let's be honest. Still wearing an XL. <laughs> well, no, this is a large. Oh, is it? That's what I'm saying. That oversize. Holy heck, Mac! That White House. <laughs> Very hard to bloody. Have your eyes open. Oh, it's it's very white. Dude, it's so comfy in here. Hey, you're looking pretty fancy, let's be honest. Oh, I feel fancy. A few things you may have noticed, the fridge is not installed yet. It's because the cruiser is not back from paint and it is in the back of the cruiser. He's spot on. Did I get it right? <laughs> sort of electrical box thing here. Electrical box is on the way. That's why we have the second battery in and all, to do yep. the fridge and that. And it's all plug and play, so that's why we ran that Anderson. And is that what we're running the lighting off too? Lighting, everything will be off that. I don't know how you'd do it much cheaper, except maybe a cheaper drawer. Well, it's cheaper. To save money. You don't have to run a fridge, you could run a Esky. True, yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, so you probably, so if you didn't want to do the dual battery system, you could, you go, could save money there. You could go get those Esky. $3 lights from the bloody hardware store. Yeah, the ones Tommy Tommy Camp <laughs> runs. Yeah, take the double A batteries. We are about to go through price list. Firewood you've got in here. Did you get three sheets? Three sheets. Came to one thirty five. Fridge I looked it up was four ninety nine. But you only paid two fifty off that dodgy guy on Facebook. Yeah, what a dodgy bugger. And the bolt from his rooftop tent punched the top of the fridge. There's a guy on Facebook, eh? Yeah. yeah it, they're totally fine. But right? I mean, he was honest and it, he said, yeah, it's totally fine. It all worked. You got the uh, car builders under there. You can't see it anymore, but it came to 320 because you haven't done the whole car yet. You've nah, just, just the cargo area. Cargo they area. call it, I think. The drawer, which I think was a good, good decision at 450. You can see how if you're on a hill, no it, there's no like there. out stopper. Mm. Like it stops it from pulling out, but not going back in. So same on the top one. So that's just, I feel like it should have like a little knurl or something or something that just sort of gives it a bit of pressure to stop it rolling back. We have all the service and consumables at around $180. Bad. I made the strut a separate item at $100. Shocks from Superior or for 840 all up. Yeah, worth it though. Wheels and tires you got for a steal, 200 bucks. Ooh. Facebook again. Yeah, another marketplace <laughs> steal. Battery BSS at 180 and lights and wiring at 375. Yes, correct. Yeah. And then we've got the battery separate at 370. 
Yes. So that does add up. Yep. Fast. That's where this is where the yeah. money's come from. Yeah. Sony head unit, 130 bucks. Speakers, 220 bucks. Finally, we got this mattress coming at 225 for a grand total, $3,984. There you go. It's just under four grand. We've ended up with a bed to sleep in, fridge to keep our food cold, and a dual battery to keep us all running. And it's a comf It's going to be a very comfortable setup. Oh, how good is the tail? I know. This is why I got the tailgate model, just so I can do this. What do you reckon it's going to all weigh, the extra stuff we've put in? Total weight of timber was 50 kilos. I've looked up the drawer fridge online. It says it's 20 kilograms, exactly. There you go. Draw here. 34. 32.5 and a helicopter. <laughs> you live in such a noisy joint. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> no. Two. 102. <laughs> 102 kilo. Quick math. A quick math. All right, so that's pretty surprising that you think that's 102 kilos. Remember, this is unloaded. Yeah, and then you've got to imagine you've got all your gear, your camping gear, your seats, your chairs, maybe a gazebo, an awning. Or... Yeah, this episode was just to try and motivate you guys if you have a similar sort of thing. One mod we left off, which was the two inch lift kit leafs that were already in the car. So they're already in the car, yeah. So if your budget was five grand to you'd still come in there, to build your car, you'd still come in under that, I reckon. You've done a good job, under four thousand dollars. I love this car. Yeah, it's Bloody running. It's, it. it's running. It's reliable and comfortable. It's pretty good. Mm. Oh, let's go get lunch, mate. Yeah, righto. Take your car. Yeah. All right, hold on, I'll just lock up the cruiser. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Oh. What are you doing, mate? What's just going on there? Don't want anyone to steal me X-Blog. Oh, yeah, take your, um, yeah. your head unit. Let me, 